Hi, Ball Charter students. How are you doing? I hope you're fine. Um, today, part five of Payback on Poplar Lane. This book, I don't know. There might be end up being 40 parts to this, to my reading aloud to you. But anyway, we'll get through it. Chapter five, we're moving back to Peter's perspective with this one. Ken stayed at my house after the launch party. He eats dinner with us on Fridays because his dad has a hospital shift and his stepmom meets with her adult coloring book group. The session of the inner circle card sharks will now come to order, I said. Can I shuffle, Daniel asked. I looked at Ken. He nodded. Request granted, I said. Daniel whooped and threw the go fish cards all over the carpet. Daniel clearly is not ready to be an official member of the inner circle. He's a junior associate. That means he plays on my team until he's ready for a promotion. After Daniel picked up the cards, we started playing. The greatest monster movie ever is Cannibal Cliff Divers on the Edge of Doom, Ken said. Go fish. While Ken was talking, Daniel tiptoed behind him. I picked up a card. No way, I said. The greatest monster movie of all time is RSVP, The Insane Invitation. You screamed so loud you woke up Daniel. Psst, Peter, Daniel said in a loud whisper. He held up two fingers. Hey, said Ken. He hugged his cards close to the chest. Looks like Daniel was cheating. Business tip, insider information is illegal, I told Daniel. Inner circle card sharks must succeed through skill only, no cheating. But secretly, I was proud of his loyalty. His promotion might be coming sooner rather than later. Okay, so insane invitation is the scariest, Ken said, but it's not the greatest. Who's hungry, Dad called. I got Chinese takeout. Baby corn, Daniel yelled. We put down our cards and went to the kitchen. Right away, I noticed something strange. Dad, I said, why is the hog wild jar empty? The hog wild barbecue jar is where we keep all our spare change. Oh, Dad said, they have this cool machine at Ready Mart. You put all your change in and get it back in bills. The hog wild jar paid for tonight's dinner. He looked proud, not embarrassed. Honey, takeouts? Mom said as she walked in from the garage. She set her briefcase on the uncracked end of the counter. Mom, my mom is a lawyer, but not the rich kind. She works for the government. I thought we were watching our spending money. Business tip. Don't talk about money in front of guests, especially when your guests have more money than you do. You're right, Dad said. He kissed Mom and left a chocolate smudge on her cheek. I lost track of time making Peter's cupcakes. Sometimes I wonder if Dad is my real father. First, I don't bake. Second, I have a career. Dad is a stay-at-home dad for now. Third, I never lose track of time. That's why I wear Granddad's watch. Time is money. Granddad was definitely my grandfather. He owned a successful business called Gronkowski's Portable Garages. His associate, Frank T. Lillyham, Lillyhammer, took over when he died. Now it's called Arnie's A-plus storage. There's no Arnie. Ken, let's get you something to drink, Dad said. He poured generic Cool Mountain Cola into an old Happy Birthday paper cups. I raised an eyebrow. Cool Mountain Cola, I said. Just try it. Dad replied. Business tip, brand names say luxury. I can tell you at my house, I buy generic a lot. No shame in that, nothing wrong with that. Before Dad got laid off, we drank real Coke. One day, when I'm a bona fide success, everything I own will have a brand name. I took a sip, it burned my throat. Gross, I said. It's gross, Daniel asked. He took a sip and twisted his whole face. Ew, it's so gross. It's the same stuff as Coke, Peter, Dad said. No, it's not. Tastes the same to me, said Ken. He drank it all in one gulp. Business tip. You can be nice or you can be honest. Choose wisely. Tom Reddy says being nice is a sign of weakness. Leaders can't afford to be weak. Dad folded a paper towel in his lap as we sat down to eat. How did the launch party go, he asked me. Terrific. I hired my very first intern. Mom raised an eyebrow. Dad smiled. 
When I was a kid, I had a lemonade stand. Ricky's refreshments. I cringed. Ugh. Remember, Peter does not like lemonade for some reason. We still have to figure out why. Lemonade stands don't make business sense. First, the market's flooded. Lemonade stands pop up in the cul-de-sac like dandelions. Dad says dandelions can be useful, but I know dandelions are weeds and weeds are meant to be destroyed. Second, lemonade is a seasonal product. Nobody drinks lemonade in fall or winter. Some people here say it doesn't matter because it doesn't ever get that cold. Those people are amateurs. If customers buy lemonade in February, it means they feel sorry for you. Pity is not a sustainable business model. Third, there's no barrier to entry. Any kid with a pitcher, drink mix, poster board, and markers can do it. As long as I'm the founder, CEO, COO, and CFO of Peter Presents Incorporated, I will never sell lemonade. 704, mom pushed some chicken around her plate with chopsticks. She doesn't eat much when she's getting ready for trial. Peter, how's the King Midas project coming along? She asked. Business tip, be vague, especially about school. It's okay. That wasn't a lie. It was okay because I hadn't started it yet. Every sixth grader at Poplar Middle has to give a presentation on a character from an ancient myth. I picked King Midas because Tom Reddy talked about him in the Mind Your Business Midas Touch issue. I don't have time to read the King Midas story. First, ancient myths are long. Second, I'm too, I'm too busy stepping up as a breadwinner for this family. Here's the key takeaway. Anything King Midas touched turn to gold. Business tip, the key takeaway is the important lesson. If King Midas were real, he would, buy my third, he would be my third mentor. Now here's the problem though. If Peter actually read the story, everything King Midas touched turned to gold. That's true. But then everything he touched turned to gold. His daughter, his food, everything. It seems like a big blessing, but it turned out to be a horrendous curse. Tom Reddy says there's a lot to learn in the world and most of it isn't in books. But when I tell mom that, she gives me the evil eye. <coughs> Speaking of books, Mind Your Business is the per perfect size for hiding in books at school. Tom Reddy thinks of everything. I've never met him, but he makes things happen. The man is a bona fide success. What are you doing in school now? Ken, mom asked. Ken and I don't go to the same school anymore. He goes to Poplar Prep. It costs t over $10,000 a year. Attending private school is a positive economic indicator. Using spare change to buy dinner is not. Ken swallowed a mouthful of beef and broccoli. Algebra, he said. My heart beat faster. Poplar Prep isn't just a school. It's a fast track to success. The fast track goes private school to Ivy League to B school. B school is business school but no one who goes there calls it that. Once we had to pick up Ken from school, so I got to go inside. Even the poplar prep air is different. It felt like coming home. The PP polar shirts, the branded PP backpacks, the PP prestige. PP even matches the initials of my business. But my parents can't afford to send me there. That's why I have a poplar prep savings fund jar in my office. It only has $7, so he's a little bit short. What's on the movie, oh, sorry, what's on the monster movie night agenda, dad asked. Ken Grin, attack of the boring blob. A nerd blob gets revenge on the bully blob squad by eating their faces off. Daniel froze. A half chewed piece of baby corn fell out of his mouth. It's not real, I told him. It's like from 1964. Sounds like a classic, Dad said. I'll make us some popcorn, my new sweet and salty mix. 7.24 p.m. I can't, I said. Tomorrow's opening day. Businesses don't plan themselves. Aw, man, Ken said, looking down at his plate. We can still watch it, Dad told him. Okay, Ken said. He smiled. Every Friday, Ken wants to watch Monster Movie Night on Scare TV. And every Friday, he freaks out halfway through the movie. He covers his eyes and someone, me, 
has to tell him what's going on. Dad, don't you have other plans? I said. I didn't want to say job searching in front of Ken. Plans? Dad said. No, not really. I want fortune cookies, Daniel said. Noodles were stuck to his face, even his eyebrows. I could never take Daniel to a business meeting at Tom Reddy's Cone Zone with those table manners. We cracked open our cookies and read our fortunes out loud. Mine was, be smart, be intelligent, and be informed. Ken's, reach out and touch the stars. Mom's, humor is an affirmation of dignity. Dad's, why walk when you can soar? Daniel's, jump, someone will catch you. I read Daniel's for him since he can't read yet. Don't throw away your fortunes, I reminded everyone. I need them for business. While mom, dad, and Ken cleared, cleaned the kitchen table, I took Daniel's, Daniel upstairs. I helped him brush his teeth and reminded him to spit. After he changed into his monkey pajamas, we opened up the latest, mind your business. He curled up close to me on the bed. We'll start with a ready reader's talk back letter, I said. Daniel sucked his thumb. His eyelids were already heavy. Dear Tom, I read aloud, big fan. Do you think great leaders like you are born or can anyone learn to do it? I was only halfway through Tom's answer when Daniel started snoring. I hugged him and snuck out of the room. That's really sweet of Peter to put his brother to bed. Putting Daniel to bed reminds me what I'm working for, the future. Not just for me, but for my whole family. I looked down, my shirt was covered in Daniel's drool. Business tip, drool is not professional. 7.46 p.m. Personal time was over. I changed into a fresh button-down shirt and tucked it in. I headed downstairs to my corner office. 7.50 p.m. Made business activity log. 7.52 p.m. Started list of Q1 goals. Wrote, hire an intern and make business activity log. Cross them both off. 7.57. Pop, pop, pop. Smelled burning kernels and butter. They smelled generic. 8.19. Ignored Ken shrieking. 8.23. Considered resale value of soy sauce packets and unused chopsticks. Outlook? Promising. 8.36. Wrote mission statement for fabulous fortunes. Generate sufficient income to buy Chinese food to get more fortunes and pay parents' mortgage. 8.41. Open parents' mortgage statement from Poplar Bank. 8.42. Put Gronkowski Mortgage Savings Fund label on an empty mega nuts jar and hid it under my desk right beside my Poplar Prep Savings Fund. 8.44. Went upstairs for success, success snack. Little Buster's Brownie and 2% Milk. Heard Dad narrating the movie for Ken. Now the nerd is, now the nerd blob is, oh, disgusting. There's a chunk of bully blob number three's nose on his snaggle tooth. 8.48. Read latest issue of Mind Your Business. Study Tom Reddy's face on the cover. Imagining my face on the cover. 857. Flag new article for dad. 10 tips for in your face interviewing success. 858. Wipe dust off laminated Peter Presents Incorporated calendar. In tomorrow's box, in black marker wrote, first day of fabulous fortunes. That's very busy. Although I, I really think Peter should be spending time with his friend instead of worrying about making a business. But I suppose if that makes him happy. But we'll see. We'll see if that really makes him happy. Stay tuned for the next installment. Peace out, Ball Charter.